So now the focus is on me to keep time. So I've told Paloma, please remind me at uh, 40 minutes so that I know I'm not uh, spilling over. Uh, you know, being the curator, I've had the pleasure of working with each, or each one of them and I hope I can bring out some hidden facets of their work. Uh, I begin the, the, um, the session by in, the, in the format that I've said saying that I'll ask each one of you to say a few words of what your work according to you is and then I will ask you certain questions or it can be a discussion and statement on how we work with you know, the idea of scale. Because uh, being an airport and you know, being in T2 which is all about uh, floor to ceiling which goes at 12 meters, uh, which is about 36 feet, it's all about scale. So how do you deal or how do you create works in scale which is not such a frequent or a, you know, easy enough opportunity for many to kind of work with. So I'll begin from the end of there. Talur, please uh, go ahead and, Hello. yeah. Yeah, this session is called uh, Scale in Public Spaces. So I can also say Vimana in public places. <laughs> the, the title can be like that. So the Vimana, you can use several uh, ways. You know, it carries a different, different meaning in different, different context. So Vimana is just not an uh, aircraft. So actually, V, Mana. Mana is a measurement. V, Mana is, you know, something beyond uh, to comprehend. Uh, in 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 uh, in, uh, in the context of scale or in the context of something, so it's called uh, vimana. Uh, especially like um, uh, in a villages, olden days, one of the biggest structure is only the village temple, and uh, the gopuram is the biggest uh, structure. All the houses are very small and tiny, so that's the reason uh, they call maybe the 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 gopuram is a vimana. So this is a kind of starting point for me to, to work in, the, in this direction. Otherwise, you know, once I have a concept, after that I, it's a kind of open-ended for me. So I kind of travel here and there. So it's more like, uh, you know, uh, people, people want to hear something, explain, explanations of the work. So only for that, that works otherwise, like it's quite open-ended work. And each time, different people, when they interpret, uh, that's how I grow with the work. Uh, I, I listen to their interpretations and then try to kind of understand from their perspective and uh, how they think. And that's how the work always alive for me. It's not like a, a one poster or one idea or one, uh, you know, uh, thing. So that, that's interesting. So basically, what you're saying is that your work grows as people interact and yeah. new stories or new layers kind of get added on to it. So that's a that's very interesting way. Latika ji, I come to you. Uh, just so that you know, uh, Latika ji's work is not yet installed, uh, but it is something that is waiting for installation. It is very much in the airport. She's done a work uh, which is 11 foot marble sculpture. We have an image of it over here. Latika ji, if you could just uh, say, you know, what your inspiration, what your work is all about. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, basically, my work uh, before two years was horizontal. Because I'm inspired by the earth. Uh, whatever happens uh, on the underground level, Right from the childhood days, since my father was a botanist, we were uh, uh, sort of related to the earth. The roots and the dried leaves and the rotten leaves, so on, so on. And basically, I would, I would catch up all the insects. And I think I was always very a uh, uh, violent child. So I would cut them up. And, and I always had a desire to see what is inside. You know, what is inside a form? So whether it's a human being, and later on I must uh, tell you that I also worked on the dead bodies when I was teaching in Banaras University. I had access to the keys to the medical museum. So 
I had to uh, really see as an artist relation between a muscle and a bone and veins and so on. So I did very intensive study. And since my scale was that, then I was suddenly invited to do a very large work, about 30 feet tall, for the ONGC building Delhi. It was a great challenge because I was never going vertical. So I was very confused about how to, how to like conceive a vertical shape because I was always going, you know, uh, very uh, long shapes, 20 feet, 30 feet, I had done on the ground. So it was a challenge structure-wise too. And now this work which you are referring to is the second work after that. Actually, the third work after that. And uh, I tried, uh, made slight uh, differences in the materials. Some were, uh, some were bronze and marble, some were uh, sandstone and marble. So uh, they look different. That's why I, I, I other, the white one I called a snowscape because of the stark white. I had been once very, very influenced by the uh, snow, the white snow that I had experienced in Canada and Norway and so on. Uh, apart from the cold, the, the, the total landscape completely going, going white, not a single streak of color. So a white marble would work very, very well uh, in that respect. But here I had to relate also to the ground. So I chose the uh, yellow Jaisalmer stone, which was closest to the earth color. And, and the shapes represent the crevices that you have. And in the memory of all the insect life that I'm, uh, I relate to still. I'm uh, still uh, very intrigued by the uh, life of termites. I've been, uh, since 1988, I've been working on uh, termites in a very serious manner, in a sense that I've traveled, uh, traveled around to places where they had uh, larger scale uh, termite hills, and I was very intrigued as to what happens inside, the inside story of a termite hill. So I formed a team and we poured uh, POP through the, all the holes. And the, <coughs> the people nearby were saying there's Kuroba, cobra living inside and life is in danger. So I said, okay, so any time the snake comes out, we all, we all run. <laughs> so we poured uh, POP and uh, it was a very fascinating uh, experience uh, as to what we found. We found the large mother queens of that size, what eight inches. I mean, imagining a, a, a tiny ant turning into that large shape. And the whole uh, lifestyle of the inside of the termite hill got uh, like discovered, you know, the, the positive aspect of the negative shape. So uh, then gradually I, some trees fell down which were affected by the termites and the, the beautiful <coughs> shapes that go on. And the whole process of uh, growth and decay, which I was already working on because I had already done work on the dead bodies and how at the Manikarnika Ghat and Varanasi they burn the bodies. So I was, I was very interested in the death part of it. Uh, and the, and the, uh, what happens uh, immediately after you die, as one of my friends was uh, discussing ash, I mean the end products is the ash, and, uh, and how uh, something else comes out of it, the experience of it. So uh, this is the uh, end result of all those experiences. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm personally very much in uh, love with this work because of uh, the color and the, and the shape and the undulating uh, yeah, whatever yeah, has come yeah, out. <laughs> yeah. It's called Earth Formations. Yes. That's the title of the work. Thank you very much. Uh, Prakriti, <coughs> moving on to you. Uh, you know, the backstory of the work is Prakriti had given a proposal through the open call for a work that measured three feet by five feet. 
but it didn't because of you know the proposal and the way it you know that the, what what you see the the multicolored the chandelier that was the original proposal but it was meant for a vertical space and it just wasn't working so we've kind of worked through the multiple uh, airport spaces and tried to figure out and hit upon a space that was perfect but the scale was not right and that's where the discussion said i said okay pragati things have to move you need to scale up and you need to do something that's different and she said okay i'm okay, fine with it as she said was the space i i gave her the space in meters which then roughly translated it to 24 by 30 30 feet not meters that that when we come to madhvi <laughs> we'll have that scale so the the challenge here is um which is i kind of going to be my next question but you take up the first thing how did you move from thinking about a sculpture which is you know like what latika ji said that she was used to working horizontal <laughs> you had something that was ground up to move to up and up into expansion of space that's that's something interesting right. uh good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you yamini for having us um how did i do it how did i change it in my head with great difficulty um i it took me 2 3 weeks just to wrap my head around it because uh, was not just the scale and the size but the fact that it was going to be ceiling suspended and i'm a weaver i'm a textile artist i'm not an engineer uh but i i have a wonderful team who helped me align we dug deep into my uh, pandora's box of samples that i had created over the years and looked at them and turned them into a medium of woven expression uh my medium of expression is copper wire i weave on the loom with wire so when it comes off the loom it takes on a sculptural quality yeah i yeah i i do i did deal with it with a lot of difficulty no and also i remember one of the samples that pragati had come with okay right. this is about talking about scale and big work with something as with as big as glass not even the bottle yeah. so bag. <laughs> in a bag in a so bag. so where's your sample she said i was like okay yeah. let's start yeah. So, yeah. you know at a different place um but my next question is going to be you know to do with the material interestingly you may say why am i going to talk about material because when we talk about scale it's just not about you know enlarging your existing material into that size but it's also rethinking your material and rethinking how you adapt or you take on new challenges which brings me to madhvi because that's what we made her do again you know the open call madhvi had sent in a proposal which was really fascinating but the restrictions of the space so here's the challenge of working in a public space and not just any public space but working in a space like an airport where the functional aspects of it <coughs> supersede anything else you know it is ultimately meant to move passengers from point a to b it is also the layer of security because we live in a world where everything is you know has to be checked and cleared what is permissible what is not so it was not just about creative or aesthetics that sometimes defined what pressures i put on the artist but it was these functional aspects also that define the work that would come in so coming back to madhvi so this is the problem right because i know the thing inside out the these stories also come out but when madhvi uh, had had given in her proposal through the open call it was something that was so fascinating and the scale was you know on a human in interaction it needed the light in a particular way which was very controlled uh people had to stand at a particular distance to look at it and it just wasn't working it wasn't working for the space that we had in mind so again think 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 what do we do how do we take this forward then we come up with another space which is there so this is in the check in hall 
Okay, so Talur's work is also in the check-in hall. Madhvi's is in check-in hall. Uh, uh, Prakati is in boarding piers, and Latika ji's work is going to be in the open space. That's another story that I'm going to come down to. Uh, so in the check-in hall, remember I started off saying that floor to ceiling it goes up to 36 feet. Uh, that's 12 meters approximately. That is there. So I start. I I got used to in the art world. You don't talk meters. Right? You talk about feet at the, you know, or you're talking in inches, centimeters, but suddenly the scale is all about meters. Madhvi got a wall space which was six meters high by 12 meters wide and two such spaces. So take it off from there, Madhvi. Yeah, no, is this working? Yeah. yeah. No, first I want to thank Bhargavi and Yamani for giving me this opportunity and pushing me into this challenging position because I did come, I am a ceramic artist so I'm used to working in relatively smaller scale compared, I mean the maximum, um, you know, one would do is like six feet, eight feet in ceramic. So um, I, when, when the first proposal didn't come through, I was, I thought, now they're going to tell me, okay, we don't want you anymore. And I was so sad. I was like, oh my gosh. And then when, when Yamini did talk about the space, I thought, wow, that is impossible to even think about. And in clay particularly, uh, my head couldn't get to that. But because I have been in the practice of working with, uh, with, with uh, material that does make form and structure and also this unique ability to think inversely. So in, in ceramic practice, we have to think about the end first and then work backwards. Uh, you have to think about, what, visualize what you're looking at and then you work back to making it. So I did the same thing. I basically used my material um, insight or instinct that I have developed over the years but I changed the material to metal and I treated it in my head like it was a slab of clay. Um, so I was going to use it that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, the creative process is very meandering. It doesn't come in a straight line. So I had to abandon one idea and then I've also been working simultaneously in my practice on mapping and maps. And I'm very fascinated with maps. Um, I am directionally challenged, so I don't know the difference between my left and my right, but I love maps. And I love them because of just how they look. So um, I started thinking airport, I started looking at airports, and then suddenly Google, I came up, I saw the map of airports. And in my head, I deleted all the lines that were there, and just the form looked just fabulous because they started looking like creatures and machines and stuff like that. So the, the fun part I have with this, uh, with this work is always asking my friends, so what do you think it is? And invariably, um, nine out of 10 people will say, uh, oh, it's a, it's a machine, it's a gun, it's a futuristic thing, it's a bird, it's... So I just love that because that's exactly what I see in them. Uh, the people who don't see that are architects and they're very boring because they see it as layouts. I'm like, how do you see it as a layout? <laughs> so that's how the, the thing actually eventually emerged. Um, and there were, you know, lots of restrictions. We also had, uh, you know, I was also thinking about th things like the material comes in a six by eight uh, sheet. Um, so looking at that, then figuring out my mapping within that, um, and conceptually, it basically is talking about the airport layouts, uh, Bangalore being the central one or, and repeats itself on both. That stays in stainless steel. Everything else is in cotton steel and mild steel. Cotton steel has that rust formation on it, so it's very alive. Um, and those were some of the things we used, and it's set on a, on a runway um, line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Thanks. Which which Yamini sent me lots of pictures, and I drooled and drooled and drooled over those images. Yeah, of yeah that that was nice. So, Talur, uh, uh, again, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, I remember you coming. Uh, I I want to talk about material. You know, how do you deal? Because I'll tell you, when uh, a lot of friends and family, when they know that 
you know, I'm fretting about something, oh, there's a big installation that's to go. They're very interested in the material of it. So how was this made? You know, uh, what goes into the process of it? How, how do you install things? Do you want to talk about that? Because yeah. Talur came again with this lovely 3D printed... Uh, um, I can't, yeah, the model. The model, which was... Which looked exactly like that. And that process was very interesting. So if you could just take us through the material. I know we had a session on material, but these are different works, different materials, and the context is very different about it. So if you could just... Oh, in generally, the idea demands some kind of a shape or a size or a something. It's not, uh, you know, it's an airport, you have to make a big sculpture. It's not about that. It's about the idea. Once the idea comes, that idea carries uh, a shape, a form, and the material too. So now known material, unknown material, like you know, certain material you are familiar with, you worked earlier, so you start working, you know, ancient sculptures and all you take, you know, chola bronze and all, then you start thinking, you know, in a, in a scale. So I think material has certain quality of making it bigger, not just because of a structural reason, not just because of a, you know, the demand of the situation. So it, 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 it demands, a, you know. So uh, I, I mean, for a long time, whenever I used to travel uh, in, in a temple, you know, the, the Tamil Nadu temple trip is amazing. So I used to uh, photogrammetry them. A photogrammetry is a technology, you know, earlier session we, three photographers, they talked about uh, stretching a photography. So something similarly, they stretch like this, I stretch like this, the 360 degree. So from there I kind of, you know, I had, a, you know, it's a, it's a, I have a lot of data in my, uh, you know, studio where uh, whenever I feel the form is interesting or the structure is interesting, I try to kind of uh, do this photogrammetry. It's my sketchbook almost, uh, you know, like a sketchbook. From that, you know, when I got this chance, I thought, oh, I mean, the GoPro is also Vimana. Oh, how, how it goes. And, and, and I kind of started composing. So I don't want to go towards a very religious or a, you know, the, the moment you see the form, uh, people, people start thinking in that direction, right? So how to kind of avoid that? So, you know, somewhere uh, the form looks like a Heidenberg, uh, you know, the balloon. You know, it's, it's a, you know, any architecture, geometrically, they are very stable, they are very, you know, firm. So the form on the top, it's a little tilted, it is not, uh, you know, the proper, it's like somewhere, you know, uh, uh, the inspiration is, I can say, the Heidenberg, the balloons, not the report. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a... Uh, it's a, you know, that's how it kind of, uh, you know, started. Then I translated that, uh, you know, the form into uh, uh, styrofoam by using CNC milling technology. So over there, I found out very interesting, uh, you know, uh, material is a styrofoam. So I specifically visited some styrofoam companies where they make a different size of styrofoam balls. So that, 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 I can use in the, as a texture of the, uh, of the surface of the temple so that I can age the temple. That, that's an interesting comment that we always get in the terminal. You know, how does that corrosion happen or did yeah. it happen after it got put? Is somebody's concern yeah. and worry or somebody who's fascinated by the textural quality yeah. Yeah. of it? Uh, it's, a, it's all about deliberation. So very, very important that, you know, when you are making something, what result you have to get. So when you start thinking about it, then you, you, you start looking at the material. And sometimes it's also very interesting that uh, certain signal material gives you that it's, a, it's, a, it's going to look like owned out or aged. And suddenly, uh, as you explore more, it starts also looking at something else, you know. Uh, you, you go more and more, uh, uh, you know, in a detail, if you see, uh, it's almost like, a, you know, uh, sandblasted uh, somewhere extraterritorial, you know, object. 
it's a, it's, it, it, it doesn't have a single reading. So texture-wise, material-wise, all it gives, uh, you know, step by step, as you involve, it will start giving you more and more information. Okay, that's, yeah. that's right. So, which actually, uh, you know, I'm loving it. Like one question and one person talks leads me into the second one so beautifully. Latika ji, I'm coming to you. Yeah. Um, mixing up is best. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, uh, when I visited your studio and uh, you showed me all these lovely uh, marble uh, maquettes that you had. And my question to you was that, there's always this thing, you make a maquette, and the maquette that I got from Talur was a 3D printed one. But the maquettes that you had made were like the old school proper, you know, we, we, in fact, we're going to get the maquettes also inside the terminal because they're that beautiful. Uh, and because they works in, in, in themselves completely. How does that process of translation happen? Or does this work also have a maquette? Or what is that? You know, that's always an interesting question that people have, saying that, how does it happen? On paper, people understand that, okay, you've made a sketch and then it, you know, it goes on to a painting. But in a sculpture, there are different processes. Like what Talur does is casting. So he had styrofoam and then you go to bronze casting. But you work with the material directly. I think when uh, Nagraj was talking about, Santosh was talking about it, saying that there's an additive and the subtractive process. So you work with like removing it. What is, does it become mechanical, you know, these are questions that are always interesting, so if you could just. Yeah, um, now uh, what I want uh, people also to know that I do more bronze casting than uh, stone carvings. So from the, uh, I went into this uh, more quantity of uh, marble carving after I did that 30 feet work. That was in 2016. I had done it earlier because my, we, we always had uh, much stone at home because my husband, Balbi Singh, had only did large stone sculptures, but I was more into bronze. But here, uh, I, I did this work after I did the 30 feet work. And there I, I felt that, uh, mm, I was not content with the, uh, the total whiteness. I had to try out the color, color part. And, and of course, I'm uh, not a maths person, but it happens that when I'm doing a work like this, there's a lot of um, mathematics has to be done, you know, exact calculations and the weight. Uh, now, which piece will take how much weight? So all that has to be worked up. But otherwise, I'm, I'm not a maquette person. I see a work and I see a marble and I uh, directly uh, uh, know what, where I want to start in the stone. And it just, just goes on because, as I said, I'm a nature lover. That means uh, my work is more organic and less calculations. But, but in that big work, because it was a commission work, so we had to do a maquette to show to the committee for doing the large work. And here I uh, must uh, make a complaint against you that, <laughs> that you, you gave a challenge to everybody and not me. <laughs> I wish you had come to me and if you had said you wanted uh, to height of 150 feet or 300 feet, I would have been happy. And I would have done it. <laughs> there's, there's always a, a place and a time and I think that's yes. where it comes in. And you, while we may not give you 150 yes. feet, we don't have 150 feet. We, I think we've given you five sculptures within <laughs> yes. that space. It's your sculpture garden. So yes. when you're traveling and if you have a bus gate departure domestic, you must step outside and you will see five sculptures by Latika ji sitting in the garden all by itself, amongst the trees, I think which is a very special thing. Yeah. Thank you. I really th uh, thank you for that. Yeah. And yeah. as uh, Yamini ji said that she visited my studio. Now, I do all my works outdoor, except for the terracotta or the pepe mache or the 
uh, ceramics. Uh, so I work, uh, I have uh, very strong pedestals, large ones, and the experience of working under trees, it, it just uh, uh, gives me new uh, 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 feelings to try out in marble. Like you said, whether you have maquettes or no, but all my trees are my maquettes, and they're there all the time. That's lovely. Yeah, and, uh, and I have uh, on my land uh, uh, snakes and birds and crows and monitor lizards, and they're all living there. So they also, you know, sometimes run around me, and I suddenly see kya hua. So the team of mongoose running. So, especially ants and so on, so on, so everything, because I live alone and uh, just two village workers come and uh, help me out making clay and so on. But stone, I, on a very large scale, I had to get a team of workers, but here I would specifically want to very proudly say that I'm a sculptor sculptor. I'm a trained sculptor and I had a lot of, uh, this is going out of the agenda maybe, but I'm a trained sculptor and I had a lot of uh, opposition to my taking to sculpture right from my second year of college when my head said that Indian girls can't do sculpture and we will not let you take sculpture and the vice chancellor gives me admission to start sculpture. Mm. So from the very beginning there was after the, my pieces are fired, the boys will go at four o'clock and take out my works and break them. And so, but as I said, uh, it was all blessing in disguise because if they break five works, I make 20 more. And the next time I went three o'clock at night, I literally with, with my uh, friend in medical college who was allowed to go out, outside the gate, we, uh, we, uh, we were in a team in the first year college. It took I brave to go at three o'clock at night. We went and I took out everybody's works, kept them nicely, and I told them that I came before you. I could also bro I could have broken everything of everybody, but I didn't. So we, we have to have a positive approach to each other if you have to learn. But it never happened. I, I think till now also there there has has been a resentment against me. Uh, maybe because I was working much more, I would, I would stay at MS University College whole nights. They had to change the rule for me. Uh, I was sleeping on newspaper, working whole night and always did the largest quantity of works. Whether it was my graduation or my post-graduation, even the Slate School of Art London, the head of the department for the first time in the his history of London University, they had to open the studio for me whole night. So I did you, extra, you, you've been a path breaker all throughout. <laughs> I think that's wonderful so, and inspirational for a lot of us over here. So thank you so much for that. So Prakriti, I want to come to your most favorite topic and my favorite topic, which was the installation of the scale work. Can we, no, it's an experience. I think what most of us, um, I mean, I can't say most of us, most of you, sorry, uh, may not realize that for all the installations that you see there, the amount of planning that is required, and you know, again, we can plan as much as you want, but the other forces around you may not support. I also have Krishnarat sitting there and looking very, you know, like <laughs> nodding and saying yes, because he went through the same kind of trials about it. But Prakti, if you could just... Uh, um, and be frank about it. Like okay. Latika ji said, I have a complaint, you can also go ahead. Oh. It's a, it's a free-for-all forum over here now. Okay, here goes, guys. Um, I think I have a bald patch somewhere at the back of my head that says, installation process, Navraspur. Right, right here, somewhere. Having said that, having said that, it... Um, it was a due process, it's the nature of the work, it's the site, it's um, lots of trial and error. You know, it's not something we've done before and you can't do it before because it's site specific, right? So nobody really is to know what it's actually going to take. And just to keep going and I think, uh, of course, there were 
I think there were times when it took, that process took everything out of me. I felt every emotion that I have depicted there, there, during that <laughs> installing process. But, um, and you know, um, I must say there was a very supportive installing team from BIAL. There was this, in particular, there was this young man, his name was Love Kush. I don't know if he's still there. And he knew, I know all the names, all the names of all the lifts, spider lift, dinkley lift, uh, scissor lift, um, bucket lift, you name it. And we tried them all. When I say all, we tried them all for my installation. We even came to a stage one day when I was crying at two in the morning. Yamini was available very kindly to me on the phone. Bhargavi was available with me through the process. And uh, I was just about giving up because they were saying that we now needed to put up scaffolding to, to install. And we're talking about an active airport. We're talking about permits. We're talking about hazards. Um, we also broke some rules, which I won't talk about now. But uh, no, no. But, but, but we, we got it up finally. And on the final day, I was actually there on my own and I engaged with my work. I spent some incredible time with it. And um, we started at 11 in the night and we were done by 5 a.m. And, you know, it was a foggy Bangalore morning and it was like, uh, Hindi mein bolu? Jase kainat, uh, you know, it comes in to embrace you. There was a white fog, me and my work. And I thought that was one of the most special moments of that installing process. <laughs> so if, if you would like to know, I think Talur uh, went through the same thing, but it went only in one night. So it started at 10 and ended at 5 in the morning because yeah, yeah. being an airport, that's the only time you get. But again, it involved, I think all the artists who worked and who had you know things which were not pedestal mounted, even those had some issues. Um, anything else? They've had, they became familiar, whether they wanted or not, with machinery names, what the machinery is capable of, and yeah. what it means to work within a space of an airport. Which brings me to Madhvi. I think while they have hours, nights, and days, Madhvi has a different story to tell. And weeks. it's a very interesting story, please. <laughs> I had weeks and months. <laughs> four months, how could you? Yeah. I, I, I must say that's a very positive thing because it took four months to get yeah. her work up and if she thinks it was weeks, no, no, no. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> no, it was months and it was each of the panels is made up of 25 uh, sections and on that is one has nine uh, metal parts, the other one has uh, 10 metal parts and then there are... Uh, mm, uh, there are coordinates. So each of those metal parts has a coordinate because it's a coordinate of the airport. So there's, so while I did have the metal parts and the coordinates organized on the boards when they came, getting the boards together seamlessly, uh, together from on one, one frame onto another frame that was on the back, there was just multiple issues that were way beyond any of our controls and it had to do with um, you know the engineering staff at Bile and uh, we discovered that you know they don't think women know what they are talking about. Let's not go that <laughs> route. <laughs> but, but anyway it resulted in multiple times of uh, redoing and that happened earlier in fabrication as well while I was working on putting it all together because I could, could not see it till it was, it came together on site. So I had, assemb I would ass I had assembled it on a very, very large factory floor and then I had to kind of literally climb up somewhere to be able to see the whole uh, thing, but it was on the floor. So there's no way to see what it was gonna look like vertically. So lots of issues that had come up at that point as well. And as uh, I think Krishna Raj said, uh, uh, that it was all about problem solving and it was a daily problem solving that I had prior to it coming here and then we had daily problem solving here uh, before it actually got up. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, also, I have a question. Do you know, to do break the pattern so that you can ask <laughs> in between and then yeah. same issues or something. So it's regarding um, the architecture and uh, uh, it's it's a question for Yamini. Last question so. <laughs> only. I we've gone 50 minutes, so please come on. Uh, okay, it's a it's a architecture and uh, the artworks. So we never met architect. We don't know what is the concept, you know, what is the idea behind, uh, you know. So, it's, it's already he designs a lot of things. It's a noisy. If, if you want to, I mean, you know, it's just for a kind of a discussion, thinking of future, you know, if you want to do what, how it has to work or something. So, artist, always I feel if we have an interaction with the architect, then there is a, you know, a lot of other problems easily get solved. Otherwise, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, how really, I mean, you know, when you have an idea, the concept, architectural concept, we don't know. Architectural, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, most of the time in, in, in case of uh, uh, buildings, it's, uh, it's always, uh, you know, the architects from cold country. So they, they, they are here. Or, you know, if we are saying uh, uh, it's, uh, it's only the Indian architects or something, you know, you, you see Carbuzia or you see Lucy, uh, you know, Louis Kahn or, you know, the, the echoes of so many things. So somewhere, you know, in the first step itself, concept is lost its way. So, so in a second stage, when you ask artists to kind of solve that problem, uh, it's 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 becomes more complicated. So so my my you know uh, you know I'm curious for how do you think? I may be wrong or something. No, so I I I think it's it's a very pertinent question. I know we've run out of time very badly. I'm just going to sum it up in like a very much bird's eye perspective. I'm you know we're not second. I I take art as us together. Art is not does not come at the second stage. Art comes when everything is done. And that's how most of us would have experienced it. And that is true whether it is a private space or whether it's a public space. Because art by self uh, is seen as something that is decorative and part of an extension of design. And the challenge for me was to break that thing, say that it's not just an extension of design, but it is something else and it needs a space of its own. For that sensibility to come in, I think it's, it, it starts by, you know, having school of architecture who understand art and it, it then goes into urban planning, then it goes into sensitization of engineers and a whole lot of things. So it's, it's a much larger question that needs to be addressed. But having said that, it's also about how you wiggle and you push your way in and make that space. And I think that's what has, I've had fantastic support uh, you know, who allowed for this kind of wiggle space to happen. The original architect's plan had two locations for art in the check-in hall. From that, we've come to 60 artworks. I think we managed to do something right. So, thank you for your patience and sitting so patiently while I went on and on. And here I was thinking that I would have somebody telling me that I'm done at 40 minutes, but that didn't happen. But I'm sure you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.